Welcome everyone. We're just gathering all the people in the waiting room to join us. We're excited about this. Hey, Carrie Tamura. Welcome world. <laughs> Hello, this is so exciting. Thank you so much for joining us on this first and uh, what will be many brewery tours that World Sake will be hosting for the sake fans and beyond. Thank you. Yeah, that's the game plan. We're, uh, we're, we're just going to chat a little bit. So have you ever been to a brewery in person? I have quite a few. I would say, I believe the count is now at nine, 10, if wow. I remember correctly. Memory does not serve me well due to uh, uh, hangovers, but you know, that's part of the job. Are you saying that sometimes people drink while they're at brewery visits? It's recommended, but not forced. Um, it certainly helps in the immersion of the experience, but um, you know, to each her and his own. It's a free country. Excellent. <laughs> and you, Chrisan, have you been to breweries? Uh, I have been to a few breweries. I've actually, I'm probably close to 27, and Dewa Zakrata is uh, two times uh, that I've visited that wonderful brewery. Uh, so that's super fun. Um, we're, uh, we're still gathering people. As you enter, uh, please uh, mute yourself and if possible, uh, turn off your camera. We'll talk about that a little bit more once we have a, a larger group, um, mm -hmm. but it helps to stop distracting uh, from the main presenters if the video is off. We'll ask you to bring your video back on later. Um, and I'll talk about that again once we do a little housekeeping once we have the majority of people into this beautiful party that we're about to get started. I'm seeing so many people join right now and uh, my mind is being blown. This is wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. This is um, very, very special uh, to have so many enthusiasts and fans join us. And um, for those of you at Sake, uh, it's going to blow your mind just as much as this brewery tour is going to be. But for those who don't, welcome indeed. And um, the tour is going to be just as exciting and um, informative um, as I will find it, as this will be my first experience to the Deo Zakara Brewery. So I'm pumped. <laughs> All right, so again, we're, uh, we're, we're waiting for a few more people to join in. Uh, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, Carrie, if you can uh, let people in. Uh, great. Yes. Um, so one th quick thing to know, if you want to say hello and check in and wave at us, there's the chat. Um, please use that to ask questions. Um, please put your questions there for Inoue Toji uh, and for Komoto-san. Uh, the harder, more difficult questions, we can save them till a little bit later. Don't enter in the chat too early because the chat becomes very long and then 40 minutes from now when we go to look for your question, it's hard to find. So if you have questions that are a little bit more technical specifically for Inoue Toji, uh, let's throw those out after we finish the tour and, and we're getting ready for the tasting part. Um, we ask that you do, if you can, turn off your camera um, during the first section just so that uh, we can focus everybody's attention on, on the hosts and our special <laughs> from Yamagata. Uh, that'll make it easy. Quick note also, uh, we are going to be recording this so that other people can watch it who could not watch it uh, live. So if you do not want to be on the recording, uh, please turn off your camera the entire time. We will ask you uh, to turn on the camera when we finish the tour and we're getting ready for the tasting because we want to do a nice big kampai with everybody uh, and have lots of people together smiling and, and raising glasses. Um, hopefully, like Carrie said, yeah, 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 yeah. And then remember, uh, those of you who are not muted, uh, we hear you every time you talk and somebody mentioned sake sake. Right. So whoever that was, uh, please do your best to mute uh, to help us out. That would be wonderful. Um, sorry. Uh, just to um, 
see all these uh, wonderful people join. I'm seeing some uh, really old names from my sake pass. This is very encouraging. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, so exciting. Oh, gosh, oh, wonderful. I wish I could hug you all right now. My gosh, it's gonna be a virtual hug. Great. Yeah. The art behind you is really amazing. Ah, thank you. Yes, um, I have no idea uh, what it's about. It's actually my wife's uh, room divider. So, um, and I think it's uh, Chinese inspired. So um, uh, that is, I don't know. Um, you have, like, my, you have my, I'm from El Salvador. So you have my Salvadorian art behind me. Ah, ah, very good. Oh, fantastic, El Salvador. Wow, uh -huh. welcome. Thank you. Yes, I work for B-Shock. Ah, bienvenidos. Thank you very much. That I is love them. Beautiful. They're the, uh, the most amazing people I've met in so many years. Yes, yes, yes. B-Shock, um, a strong supporter of Gyo Zakura and World Sake labels. and also the sake teaching, I'm a bartender there, so I'm, I'm learning so much, and I'm so excited. Excellent. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. This, thank this you for great. having me. Thank you. It's our honor. Thank you. <sighs> All right. Well, who are you, sir? Uh, we're going to do our self introductions now. But again, uh, if we could, if everyone uh, turn off their cameras so that when you're watching, instead of seeing everybody, you're going to be able to just see the four, the, the hosts, and uh, Kamoto san and, and Kerry and, and Akari, who will be doing our tour. Uh, that way, it's a little bit easier for uh, it won't uh, clog up your. How story. do I do that? Hold on, hold on. Uh, okay. In the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, there's a, a stop, stop video. video. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. Okay. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna get we're gonna get started, and I'll start with a little self-introduction. Hi, I am Chris Johnson, uh, the national sales manager for World Sake Imports. I uh, have been in love with sake since I came back from Japan in 1996. And I've been happy to promote, taste, share, drink, talk about uh, as often as possible in all those years. Uh, sometimes I am known as, although not in the world sake imports world, I am uh, referred to as the sake ninja. Uh, so that is where you might have heard of me in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but we're excited to be here and excited to be working with the, the Dewa Zakra team today and really excited to take a trip over, over there. But uh, Carrie. Yes. Hello. I have, I have a couple afternoon. of questions. The Good first evening. one is, has anyone ever had Dewa Sakura Sake before? Please answer in the poll. And is while that, that poll is happening, Carrie, how about uh, you do me a favor and tell us who you are? Oh, yes. Uh, my name, hello, everybody. My name is Carrie Tomora. I've been with World Sake now representing um, the company in the Southern California region, particularly in Los Angeles. Um, it's been 10 years, uh, actually nine years now with World. Uh, before that, I uh, started in hospitality in Chicago and uh, sipped my, my very first sake that captivated my soul, uh, Chiyo Musubi from Tottori. Um, and it's been really a, uh, just yeah, a, a passion, a love, uh, excitement, a joy ever since then. And I'm uh, just happy to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> cool. All right, we're at about 83% of people have voted. Um, so I'll give it a give it a few more few more seconds if those of you want to get in there and, and give us an answer. Um, we're uh, we're excited to get going. All right, 84%. I think we're we're pretty close. Uh, I'm gonna end the poll and and Harry, tell us what's going on here. Yes, sir. So um, we will be, uh, let's see. <laughs> um, maybe I need to start drinking right now. Okay, um, right. So uh, the poll and then next page. Ah, let's go. Are we taking a tour throughout Japan? Let's, are we looking at some uh, maps? Is that the deal? We will, in a, we will in a minute. I'm just going to let everybody know our reaction to the day was awkward a question. And uh, a resounding 62% said that they drink it every day, which is fantastic. Um, that, would make, that would make Komoto-san and, and Inoue Toji extremely happy. Um, 
A few, uh, my favorite word, not yet, we have a good 13%. And today, 16% are you can try it for the first time, which is fantastic Hi. and great to hear. Um, so, yes, uh, Carrie, we are going to go to a brewery in Yamagata. And what I'm going to do now is take us to Japan. We'll take you to Japan real quick. Please. And let us know what's going on here. Where are we? So right now, we um, if you were to imagine Japan like a banana, uh, now the entire country fits in the state of California. And um, so in terms of climate, you're looking at the southern half of Japan, um, relatively similar to the southern half of California, um, tropical, uh, heavy rains, and then northern half of Japan, much like northern California, lots of snowfall, plenty amounts of water um, and many many sources of water as well uh, japan certainly is one of the more uh most one of the mostly um uh, fertile and irrigated countries in the world so um, i see a little red pin there is that is that somewhere we should focus on i think so chrisan let's zoom in <laughs> wonderful so that's right. Yamagata, i guess the green spot where dewazakura is located Yes. And um, so something about Dewazakura is that uh, ideally located in uh, one of the more um, um, agriculturally driven uh, regions of the country where it's just known for its meats and its vegetables. You have, of course, the, uh, the influence of seafood as it, has, uh, as it borders the Sea of Japan on the West Coast, a very diverse um, and very I would say uh, healthy and natural uh, ingredients. Uh, lovely, lovely cuisine and sake, of course. Fantastic, all right. We're gonna go uh, one more and zoom in on exactly where Dewa Zakrata is. Hi, hi. As you can see, it's, it's right in the, in the middle of, a, of a, a mountain range and it's in the Yamagata Basin. Uh, that blue line and, and there's a very important uh, river that runs through uh, Yamagata and it's the Mogami or the mother river that, that uh, runs all the way from all the mountains through the different basins and, and out to Sakata. Um, it is a driving force of all the things that happened in, in Yamagata, the trade uh, back with Kyoto with the, the Kitahabara boats that would go down south. Super cool uh, space to be in, but uh, how do you feel about enough of these maps and stuff when we meet some people from Japan? Let's go for it. So, Kamoto-san, we are lucky enough to have with us today uh, Naoki Kamoto, who is the uh, International Sales Director for Dewa Zakura, as well as Inoue Toji, who has been uh, the head Toji of Dewa Zakura since 2011. Um, and we're going to hand it over to them and let them say hello, and you and I are going to step back for a second. Uh, my name is Yoshiyuki Inoue. Uh, I'm uh, in the other class, 30 years. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let me introduce uh, about uh, Inoue Toji. Uh, uh, he has been uh, working for Dewazakura. Uh, it was 30 years ago. 30, yeah, 30 years ago. And uh, he has been working for as Dewazakura's Toji uh, since 2011. And uh, actually, we Dewazakura have two sake breweries. One is here in Tendo City, this is headquarter, and another located in Yamagata City. It is next to Tendo City. And uh, he has been, uh, he used to work as a Toji for Yamagata Gura, but from next year, he is moved to Tendo Sake Brewery, so headquarter. So he will be a main Sake Toji uh, for the other club. Krista, okay, this guy, me. Do you got it? Okay, okay. Okay, so let, let me introduce about me, just a little. 
Uh, my name is Naoki Kamota. Uh, I've been working for Deozakura uh, for 20 years and uh, as, as a sales manager of exporting division. And uh, yeah, recently I'm feeling really sad because uh, we cannot go out so often for drinking. And uh, as you know, the restaurant business uh, has been facing difficulties for these three or four months. But I'm really excited and I'm so happy uh, to be able to see your face, uh, over 130 people's face uh, by using Zoom. Uh, without maybe COVID-19, we can't imagine this kind of web sake brewery tour. So I hope you guys really enjoy a uh, sake brewery tour and the tasting and please give, give us uh, any questions uh, any questions uh, which you, you would like to know. We will do our best. Thank you. Okay, Krista. Yeah, no, I know we're ready. So uh, thank you for your introduction. Carrie, you ready to go on a tour? Uh, Carrie, unmute Natal. Yes, I'm ready. Please take us. Come okay, up the okay, side okay. and go <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> So amateur, so you're sorry guys, okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm ready for tour, if you're ready for tour, who, who's gonna take us on this tour? Uh, Naoki, are you bringing us? No, I don't believe so. I think we're going to yes. the next generation of the Deo Zakra family. Oh, hi Shotaro, yes, yes. hi Akari. Akari. Hello. Hi everyone. Akari. Hi, I'm Akari and he's Shotaro. He is the... Hi, good evening. <laughs> I'm Shota Nakano. I'm fifth generation of the Azaka Sakiburi. Thank you for joining us today. Now we are in the outside of brewery. So I will take you on a tour uh, into the, our brewery. So Fantastic. let's go inside. Let's do it. After you. All right. While they adjust their camera, there it is. Don't forget to change your shoes, everybody. So while we're going to the brewery, Kamoto-san, how long has Dewa Zakura uh, been around? Yes. Uh, they are in the steaming place. So that machine that's all wrapped up, what is that? Uh, that is a washing machine. Washing machine for rice. Uh, Akari-chan, dozo. Please go ahead. Now we are in a place for washing rice and steaming rice. Here we are washing the rice and soaking water to absorb the proper amount of water here. And this is our steamer. Wow, is that we a new steamer? 2,000 kilograms rice every day. Did you hear that, so Carrie? 10,000 kilograms. Yeah, every day. Rice steaming is our morning routine. Using this steamer. Wow, that's a lot of rice. Yes. It's pretty how, awesome. How old is the steamer? Old. How many years? It's quite the new steamer. It's maybe two or three years old. Oh, two or three years. Okay. Be, um, and bef before the steamer, um, uh, uh, did you have a metal steamer or uh, was it wooden? Because I, um, 
a lot of the breweries that I've seen, I've seen wooden steamers, but this looks very, quite advanced. Three years ago, hmm. we used this wooden steamer. And why, why, uh, what, uh, what was the reason for the change between the wooden and now the metal steamer? Because we would like to make more high quality rice. Ah. So we decided to change the steamer. I see. And I see. this steamer is too small to steam 2,000 kilograms rice every day. I see. It's too small. I see. Interesting. Huh. So where are we so going? We will move to next room. So Komoto-san, Dewazakura, while they're climbing the stairs, Dewazakura was founded in what year? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, as you can see, there is a really steep stairs. <laughs> uh, after steaming rice, uh, we have to carry steamed rice into coach room, coach making room. And but Dewazakura's coach making room locates second floor, second floor. So we have to climb up, go up to the coach room by hand. Uh, it's about, okay, it's about 10 kilogram, uh, one person 10 kilogram. So we have to carry carry uh, 10 kilogram rice many times, many times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask you a question to the audience. Uh, if we use, if we use 1,000 kilogram for making one fermentation tank, how much percentage rice do we use for making koji rice? Krisa, you, you know what I mean? I you think know, out of 1,000 kilograms, how much is used for koji? That's right. 1,000 kilograms is total. So we use 25 kilogram, 25% uh, of rice will be used for koji making. 75% of rice will be used just steamed rice. So this is a kind of a mixture, coach and steamed rice, water, sake is. This is a mixture of sake fermentation. Well, looking at the chat, we have two um, uh, uh, um, suggestions. Yes. 200 kilograms from yes. Todd. Oh, and good, good, good. Yeah, actually 25% is average. Actually average. Mm -hmm. for, for example, for making yeast starter, we call that shubo in Japanese. We use 33%, one third. 33% will be used for koji, uh, koji rice. And the final uh, tomeshikomi, it is only 15 or something like that. So this is the total, total percentage from the first to the end, 25%. Yes. Okay, Ak Akari, it looks like okay. we're in a koji room. What are, where are we now? Yes. We are in the cozy room now. Normally, steamed rice is carried in this room and separated this table. And we shake to cozy mold in this room over 30 degrees Celsius and became cozy in two days. Hmm. This is cozy mold, and we put cozy mold into this equipment. <laughs> equipment, and we shake cozy mold on the rice. And for those of you who are curious, uh, 30 degrees Celsius is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Quite warm. Thank you. Yeah, and um, just a, uh, uh, I just wanted to bring people's attention to uh, a fun fact from Tasho Pierce, who's also with World Sake. 
actually uh, the next generation of this family-owned business. Um, he's saying that the rice steamer um, is the same one that is used at a sumo training facility. Those sumo guys need a lot. They eat a lot of rice, man. They eat a they lot. They eat a lot of rice. They got to sweat it out. Good for the pores. Ah. Akari-san, where are we now? We are in the other cozy room. Uh -huh. Here is the day, the day, here is the room for day one. Mm. So we cultivate the koji in this room. And second day, we move koji rice this room and using this table. Is there koji. Is there a difference between temperatures of the two rooms? I know. Uh, uh, um, is uh, the second Koji room temperature different from the first Koji room? Yes. Second Koji, second day's Koji room, it, the temperature is more higher than the first room. Uh -huh. uh, why, why is that? Because we want to dry the koji I see. Mm -hmm. and what is the temperature of the second room like 35 degrees celsius okay so 95 degrees fahrenheit quite hot um a question from tahoma san um yes. uh tahoma fujisake um it, the table does it have a heating um is that a heater uh in the ta inside the table that is heat panel oh heat panel okay yeah and in the table what what is that um oh what is that uh mesh what is that covering oh. okay okay i will explain uh, this is a kind of a stainless, uh, stainless, and uh, we we put the uh, white sheets, we put the white sheets over it, and uh, and we carry a second day a koji rice over the table, over the table, and as you can see, this uh, day two, day two, uh, I think the table space is more uh, is the table space is wider than day day one because the uh, Koji mold is getting higher and higher and uh, hotter and hotter uh, on second day because they grow up their numbers uh, very much. So the first day and second day uh, compared to first day and second day, second day is really, really hot. So we have, we need more space. We need more space to control the temperature. I see. So I think the table space is uh, maybe, they were only one table, but day two, as you can see, there are three tables. That we have uh, three table for second day. Kelly's now okay. Okay, yes. Okay. Very nice. Yes. Yes, um, Nina said um, there is the stainless steel so that there is more air circulation, mm -hmm. uh, more heat underneath and on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 okay, mold needs oxygen, like human beings. And uh, as you can see, coach, uh, coach making room is uh, closed, uh, closed space. So uh, if we don't have any air circulation, the oxygen percentage is going down, and the human being will not be able to work over there. So uh, we need uh, air circulation for coach mode and for human beings, for club eaton. Okay. Hi. Arigatou Yeah, he's open. Old school air conditioning right there. <laughs> Winter yeah, time, school. bang open, bang school. open the cold air from, the, from the, the very cold region of Yamagata and all that snow and boom. It's chill. 
we will move in the next room. Okay. Okay. Teresa. Hey. Uh, if there is any question about coach making, hey. we can answer the question. Oh, okay. Um, so do you have, do you use only, um, how many types of koji do you use? Just one type? Okay, this is Inoue Toji, from Inoue Toji. What is the koji? Koji, no. Koji, no. Koji, no. Four types. Uh, four types? Yeah, four types. And um, what, is the, what is the difference between all four? What is the difference between all four? What is the difference between all four? <laughs> right, well, while that might sound a little bit more difficult, we might need some translation. It looks like we're going to another room, so let's yeah. hear from Akari. <laughs> we just arrived making shoe volume. Shubo. And for those who um, are unfamiliar with the, uh, the word shubo, um, in Japanese, uh, if you were to write out the word shubo, it's essentially the mother mash. It is the, the, uh, the, the catalyst to the fermentation when more rice and more water is added to this, to this uh, uh, concentrated yeast starter. Um, very, very important. Um, now, uh, sake compared to other alcoholic beverages, each stage is, is, um, is built on the previous um, uh, uh, step. So if the shubo is not properly um, uh, fermenting, um, then whatever you do afterwards cannot save the sake. Um, so this is regarded as one of the more important uh, stages of sake making. Um, now, a uh, very quick question. Um, I have one from uh, Cassidy as it pertains to koji. Um, she would like to know the koji target moisture. Koji target moisture. Hi. Hmm. Essentially, is, um, I believe this is uh, the moisture level uh, hmm. that you want to achieve with the koji. Hmm. Okay, while they're pondering that again, let's listen to Akari as she is standing in there. Those are lots of small tanks. Are those all individual shubo tanks? Yes, these are shubo tanks. We use this small tank to make shubo. We put the water, koji, steamed rice, and yeast put inside this tank to make shubo. It takes two weeks to make shubo. Okay. Wow, and when you, when you first walked in, I saw a bunch of small wooden uh, containers. What, what, uh, what do you use those for? These containers <laughs> using like this to carry the steamed rice here. Excellent. From steamer. Very cool. Is it heavy? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Very heavy. All right. So it's a good workout. 20 kilograms, right? Yeah. And this is heavy. Total 25 kilograms. So, Carrie, you can get a good workout when you go live there. Uh, back behind the Shubo barrels, is that a sake god? Or a. Never mind. So what is this? Uh, <laughs> these are equipment to make sugar. It's like a step to reach the small tank. Um, what type of shubo uh, do you make? This is a question from Tahoma Fujisake. Mm -hmm. What kind of shubo? What type of shubo? Um, let's save. Let's save those more complicated questions for the Q and A uh, with 
where we can translate and not be in the middle of the tour because those are things that are going to take a little bit longer for Inouye to answer, just like the questions about the specific type of koji moisture, et cetera. I, I, um, okay, but very good. Let's, let's be careful going down those steep stairs and take us to the next place. Singular <laughs> So we're a, little bit, we're a little bit frozen, but uh, Kamoko-san, where is she? Where did she freeze frame? Uh, okay, uh, she is moving to a special room for fermenting tanks. Fermenting tanks. Uh, but right now, as you know, we do not brew sake anymore. So every tank has been used for aging uh, and pasteurized special sake. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. Because we we it is really easy to control the temperature of inside of the tank. So, uh, off season we can use every tanks for aging sake and uh, of course in winter season we can use every tanks for brewing sake. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, it looks like she's still going to be frozen in the in the cooling area of the tanks. We'll talk about these tanks a little bit later because it is it yeah. is very interesting in the uh, manner in which uh, Dewa Zakura treats uh, their ginjo um, yeah. and their, their sakes by keeping it, it very temperature controlled. Again, Yamagata yeah. is, is one of the, the highest ratio of ginjo producers in all of Japan. Yeah. Um, they produce a, a crazy large amount of ginjo and Dewa Zakura takes special care to make uh, the wonderful beverages that some of you and hopefully mm -hmm. most of you will be tasting with us a little bit later. Um, Akari, if you can move to the next place, that would be fantastic. So Komoto-san, what's the longest that you age sake in this room while we're waiting for the camera to come back? Uh, yes, uh, we Japanese sake industry uh, have been developing aging sake uh, for over uh, 30 or 40 years. And uh, we develop a club has many kinds of aging sake. Uh, for example, age is three years, for example, age five years, sometimes age 10 years or something like that. And uh, uh, Special Daiginjo Age Sake, the name is Yukimama, uh, which has been exported to US market for many, many years. And uh, uh, so maybe uh, Akari uh, is going to take you to the special Shumingura. Shumingura means uh, sake sleeping, uh, aging warehouse. <laughs> so uh, we are aging many kinds of special Daiginjo Sake over there. And uh, we will show you uh, Yukimama aged five years for every audience, uh, the next tasting session. Okay. Okay, Chris. Yeah, Dozo Akari, she's, she's okay. there. Okay, Akari-chan, Dozo. Ah, okay, they're outside. No, I'm in uh, storage. Now the temperature is minus 3.5 degrees Celsius. It's so cold it froze your camera. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about that. It's just that's what happens when you're in a super cold room. So I don't know, Carrie, if you noticed that, but as they walk through each of the rooms, uh, they had a little a little mini shrine to uh, the sake gods, it, it makes sure that they're they're watching over and uh, protecting protecting the brew. Uh, and that, to me, that's one of the um, one of the more remarkable things that uh, drew me to sake because um, 
compared to other uh, alcoholic beverages in the world, um, sake is really about, um, there is a spirituality to it. Um, I'm sure there are other, uh, there is um, uh, a relationship to uh, a divinity uh, with other beverages, but with sake particularly, there are sacrifices that are made before the brewing season. Um, there are shrines located throughout the brewery, just so that there is some kind of um, spiritual presence to bless the sake that is often enjoyed, not just in social occasions, but at weddings, at funerals, um, any kind of celebratory occasion, sake is enjoyed. And even um, a little bit, uh, perhaps a dark subject, even for seppuku, for, um, for committing suicide, uh, the blade is dipped in sake before it is sliced into the gut. Um, hardcore, but that's what sake to me is at the well, end of the I day. Mean, you are talking to a ninja, so we understand. <laughs> Um, yes. All right, so as, as uh, Akari-san's uh, camera is unfortunately still frozen, uh, some people in the chat <laughs> have, indicated, have indicated that that might have been a ninja doing it. I'm going to say that it was the cold, 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 cold temperature, which helps make these sake age. But uh, how does everybody feel about getting ready to, uh, to sip some sake? Oh. Um, are we ready to, to get prepared for tasting? So why doesn't, why doesn't everybody uh, grab their glasses while we're doing that? Carrie and I, and grab their sake. Carrie and I are going to show you a few pictures um, from the brewery just to show some of the things that happen at, at De Wazakara. So they do do their own milling. Um, we're going to ask a question about it later, but they do separate the rice into categories and mill them separately, which is super wonderful. Um, as you can see, even though they are, as you noticed from the size of the brewery earlier and the size of the steamer, they're still doing a lot of hand washing and hand monitoring. Working with the steamed rice, right? Again, very hands-on for a brewery of this size. This is a little bit of the, the, the koji that we saw from the, the koji room uh, a minute ago. Uh, here, a little bit during fermentation, but again, very much so a, a level of, of hands-on and, and, and working. Here we have uh, bean zoom in, uh, the pasteurization uh, in the bottle. Um, again, you can see that there's not that many bottles in there and that they're doing this pasteurization and chilling it there. And they're still producing quite a few bottles to do that. It's kind of a wonderful thing. Um, so, I would love for everybody at this point um, to grab their sake, uh, share their camera. You can stop. You can stop blocking your camera if you want to. If you want to join everybody, um, we're gonna pour, pour ourselves. <laughs> If you click on the top gallery view, um, you'll be able to see everybody, uh, which is super fun. And uh, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah, man. Bring it on, on dudes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll our Holy shit. We'll I'm going to start, start with a, a little bit of uh, cherry bouquet. Yeah. What I love about the Osaka is once you open that cap, it's just, it's paradise. I'm telling you. This is how I want to die. I want to be surrounded by this aroma all over my skin, okay? All right. Uh, that, uh, for some reason, Carrie's getting dark all the whole time this time. But anyway, for, uh, thank you all for joining us. No matter which page you might find yourself, raise your glass. And let's say kanpai. Kanpai. Kanpai, everybody. Kanpai, everybody. To death. Hello, hello, hello. Kanpai. <laughs> All right, so uh, thanks again for cheersing. Uh, if, uh, if the people in Honolulu could capture screenshots of this, that would be great, because I want to share that with people. It's super cool. Um, but we're going to start tasting the, the cherry bouquet. Um, a few quick notes on the cherry bouquet, and we're going to ask uh, Komoto san and Inoue told you to taste them together. Um, we're going to go with the the Oka Ginjo, as I said, just a few quick notes on it, right? Polishing ratio is 50%. We're using Dewa Sansan and Hainuki rice. Uh, the yeast is Ogawa. It's about 15 to 
uh, alcohol content, an acidity of 1.2, and, and a fairly high SMV for the level of aromatics and, and moments we'll taste about at, at 5.0. We'll discuss how little I care about the SMV number later, uh, but for now, it's just useful to note that it is a relatively dry sake, even though we're getting some of these great aromas. Oops. All right, so Kamoto-san, Inoue-san, Please tell us about, please tell us about Dewa Zakura, Oka. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me explain about uh, Oka, Cherry Buke Ginjo Sake. Uh, we, Dewa Zakura, has been brewing premium sake for many, many, many years. Uh, actually, it, it was since 1960, 1960. But at that time, there weren't a lot of people who enjoy it. Kinjo premium sake. So we Devazakra decided to introduce this Oka Ginjo in 1980. In 1980. Uh, for the people who'd like to enjoy premium sake. And uh, it was really unique sake. First of all, the aroma is really, really fruity. It's like a melon. It's like a delicious apple. It is really unique at that time. And the taste is really smooth and the aftertaste is really clean. So the people were, were so surprised and this sake became become one of the most famous and uh, popular Ginjo label in Japan. Thank Fantastic. you. Yeah, uh... It's okay. kind of just as, as everyone, I mean, I'm drinking out of a wine glass. Everybody has their own glass. Mm -hmm. Ideas with this Ginjo category of sake that Dewa Zakura is kind of a, a big pioneer in um, the aromas that you get. This this floral cherry bouquet is a beautiful, beautiful word to describe uh, this sake because there's these beautiful white lily flowers and cherry blossoms and soft notes of strawberry that I get. Um, on the palate, it's clean and there's fruit, but it's got a very precise dry finish. It's, it's, just a, it's just a really, really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sipping sake. Um, what, uh, Inoue-san and, and Kamoto-san, what, what would you eat with this? Like, what's your favorite food to enjoy with cherry bouquet? Cherry mm. bouquet uh, uh, Shellfish? Shellfish? Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can uh, I'd yeah. like you I'd like you guys to enjoy this sake uh, with appetizer. Appetizer. So sometimes uh, it's a kind of a marine, uh, not strong taste. I'd like you enjoy aroma and taste with uh, light flavored uh, dishes. And I enjoy usually with cheese. After dishes, uh, yes. yeah, cheese, yeah, so good. I think this with a with a nice uh, a hard cheese like a Comte mm. uh, would be amazing. That was for you, Mark Um uh, You know, a little a little Comte pit pairing, uh, mm. but yeah, that's delicious. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yum. So we're gonna move on to our our second sake. Okay, okay. Of the group. Dewa Sansa. Dewa Sansa. And that's going to be Dewa Sansa. So if everybody's ready, this is the, the next sake that we'll be tasting. Uh, for those of you who <laughs> have it, that's the one. Um, Kerry, what, what's De, what is Dewa Sansa? I eat to this snare. Uh, I mean, I mean um, so Dewa Sansa. <laughs> It's, um, uh, it is named after the, it's, it's a plan works. It's named after the three peaks of, of Yamagata that, um, and these three, three peaks are mainly the source of water that Dewazakura uses, uh, that uses in their sake. Um, now, uh, sun, sun is three and the second sun is mountain. So it is the, the, what should we say, the three mountain range. Um, and essentially it is, 
it is named, the, the rice varietal is named Dewa Sansan as well, which is indigenous to Yamagata Prefecture. Um, yeah, now Yamagata Prefecture has a uh, geographic indication of this particular rice strain. Um, as you can see on the front label there, the uh, GI, yes, very good. Um, now the Dewa Sansan rice varietal is known to have a green apple tartness. Uh, very, very unique amongst the uh, rice varietals that I've experienced. Um, Super, super well balanced. I uh, this is another winner, and uh, yes, yes, top top marks. You're happy. You're happy with the nose. I'm very happy with the nose. Thank you, Inoa san I love you. <laughs> so, Dewa san san In order to get that geographic designation, as we mentioned before, just real quick, it's also milled to fifty percent, as Carrie described. It's using the Dewa San San rice. In order to get that geographic designation, we must use Yamagata yeast as well. Mm, yes. This is a, a, a Yamagata yeast that they're using. Um, here, alcohol again is about the same amount. Acidity a little higher, uh, mm. a, a little quote unquote sweeter by a slight amount in the SNV, but the mouthfeel here, because it's a Jinmai, is just much rounder, much fuller. Um, yeah, that's, that's fantastic again. Uh, and just to um, uh, just a small technicality. Um, now the first sake that we had was a ginjo, and the second sake is a jumai ginjo. The only difference between the two is that a ginjo sake has a distillate added, and jumai ginjo does not. So it is a more pure expression of the rice, which makes sense. They want to uh, be sure that the, the the flavor of the rice is clearly expressed uh, through this lovely drinking experience. And based on that, I'm going to have a little more. All right. Uh, Kamoto-san, do you in any way uh, told you have anything to say about Dewa Santa? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, we have... Chris, can you... I... Don't... Yes, yes, yes. This is the picture of Yamaha rice. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, Dewa Santa. Brown rice, original rice. And this is after the polishment. So 50%, uh, I'm sorry, this is Dewa Sansan. I'm sorry, this is Dewa Sansan. This is polished Dewa Sansan, 50%. And uh, Dewa Sansan is a really uh, unique rice, which is only produced in Yamagata Prefecture. Yamagata Prefecture. And it was about 20 years, uh, 25 years ago, I'm sorry, it was developed. And recently, uh, there, are, there are many sake breweries who started using Dewa Sansan for their sake making, other than Yamagata Prefecture. So, for example, Toyama Prefecture, blah, 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 blah. So, there are many uh, other prefectures located in uh, outside of Yamagata started using Dewa Sansa. Yep. Yeah, it's a fantastic rice. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful sake. Um, when talking about cheese, the last sake, we, for me, it's a little bit more of a hard cheese that has those natural floral notes. For this, for this sake, my favorite pairing is mm -hmm. with a cow's milk triple cream. Um, it just picks mm -hmm. up on, on all the melon and the green apple in this sake, and it plays right into that lactic fermentation of, of the, the, the Nama cow's milk, uh, a beautiful, beautiful sake with that. Uh, also, uh, mm -hmm. shellfish like scallops, because you're picking up sweetness, matching sweetness. And this also, a little bit outside mm -hmm. the box, I like this with uh, smoke. So uh, barbecue or preserved mm -hmm. meats or smoked trout and things like that, where you're yeah. pulling uh, fruit yeah. against the smoke, because yeah. those two things pair really yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think uh, this Dewa Sakura's Dewa Sansan's uh, character is uh, kind of a well-balanced sake between sweetness and acidity. And uh, when I go abroad for a business trip, I always explain about this sake. This is a kind of a, uh, this is a kind of a sake which connect with wine and sake because this, this tasty is a kind of, a, I think it is very similar to uh, New Zealand, Marlboro, Sauvignon Blanc. Right, 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 right. 
Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, when I, uh, similar character with the Sansan. So when I go abroad, I always explain uh, by using uh, Marbono Sauvignon Blanc is a kind of a, uh, which has a similar character with Deva Sansa. Yeah, there's okay, nice candy here. It's got beautiful fruit. It's crisp and clean, but also giving that that round, nice mouthfeel. Yeah. Uh, it is a it is a super fantastic beverage. Um, mm -hmm. I have one quick little shout out uh, for someone because we're sipping sake. Uh, there's a gentleman, uh, DJ Leper, who drove 60 miles uh, to pick up the sake today, and we want to thank you for for all everyone who grabbed sake. But a uh, 60 mile drive is is the standout. Hopefully, uh, DJ is still with us. And we want to say thank you for uh, making that effort, um, and I hope you're enjoying the show. We have one more sake uh, to go over, and then we're going to get into Q&A. We might run a little bit over that 60-minute mark, but that's okay because we're having fun, people. Um, all right, so our next sake, grab your uh, Festival Stars, Toby Roku. Uh, this is a uh, secondary fermentation in the bottle sparkling sake. Um, so these are all natural bubbles. Um, again, uh, you can softly roll it if you want to integrate the, uh, the leaves into the sake, or you can open it as is. Just be careful when you open it because uh, there is gas in here, so it can sometimes uh, jump out at you. And I just had it overflow. All right. Got it in my glass. What a treat. What a treat. All right, so just a few quick notes. This is also milled to 50%. Uh, it's using the same rice as the cherry bouquet, right? Dewa, Sansan, and Hanuki. It's also using Ogawa yeast, uh, 15 to 60% alcohol, which is, again, similar to the cherry bouquet, uh, slightly higher acidity and then uh, a sweeter sake overall, uh, probably with a little bit of uh, residual sugar from the ferment so that you could continue fermenting and getting the bubbles. But we're gonna ask those detailed questions to Inoue-san in a minute. One note about the uh, Festival Stars, it is uh, unpasteurized sake. Um, now, all of our sakes that we do import from Japan are um, essentially in climate controlled containers from the doorstep of the brewery to uh, wherever it is, you'll be enjoying the sake. Um, and World Sake was one of the pioneers in, um, if I may toot the, uh, my employer's horn, is that uh, it's one of, it was the pioneer in essentially um, preserving the quality of the sake and allowing it to be fresh as though you were in Japan uh, drinking it stateside or in the UK. Um, truly phenomenal. And also um, dry which you'll come across a lot of sparkling sakes that have fruit infusions, which are a good time and I'm not knocking. But um, this one is um, a ideal sparkling sake that really will be harmonious with your meal. Um, certainly shellfish comes to mind right off the bat. Um, perhaps there are some cheeses as well that, uh, that uh, go well with this, but it's, I, I think the, 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 uh, the possibilities of pairing are quite uh, uh, limitless with, with this crisp, clean festival stars. I would, uh, I would agree. I don't know uh, what else I can add to that, uh, uh, Carrie, with that amazing facial expression after enjoying it. Um, I love the tropical notes. I love the fact that there's almost a little bit of that yeasty kind of a component that really uh, completes the flavor profile, reminds you that it, even though there is sweetness here, it still comes off as a dry sake in comparison to some of the other um, the other sakes of, of, of the sparkling variety. Um, but let's ask a quick question to uh, Kamoto-san and Inoue-san in reference to this particular sake. Um, again, I mentioned before, the base ingredients and the yeast is, is the same pretty much as the cherry bouquet. What is different uh, to make this sake the way it is? Uh, well, And Naoki-san is currently muted, so please unmute yourself. Okay, okay. 
uh, yeah, uh, the ingredient is the same as uh, cherry bouquet, uh, but uh, of course we have to think about the second fermentation in the bottle. So uh, the before bottling, the taste is really sweet, sweet. Uh, actually, uh, Nihon Shudo uh, sake meter value is minus three or something. So it is really sweet sake. So after boiling and after capping, uh, it's about 10 to 14 days of second fermentation period. And after that, uh, we get to the pressure. Uh, 0.2 megapascal. 0.2 megapascal. So it's not as strong as uh, the champagne, uh, but we do as I think uh, that pleasure level is uh, ideal pleasure for enjoying meal. So after getting to 0.2 megapascal, we move Hobiroku into minus five degrees Celsius. A uh, really cold warehouse, and we stop second fermentation. That that is our method. Um, and actually, uh, when we when we export to the abroad, we usually pasteurize it, pasteurize it. But Warsake imports can control the quality, uh, no problem. So we have been exporting to um, pasteurize Tobiroku to U.S. market and uh, England market for many, many years. Thank you for your- Of course. Okay. Yeah, thank you for your quality, keeping the quality. Uh, it all starts with you making super quality, amazing sake. So that's an easy thing, uh, an easy thing. No, to no, do. no, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so Carrie, I know we've, we've got a few uh, sakes with uh, questions within the, uh, the chat. Um, yep. But- Okay, please. Go ahead, fire them off. Hey, okay, so um, let's do uh, Todd Bellamy, Todd Bellamy-san. Ogawa yes. yeast, that is number 10 yeast? Is That's that right, one? yes. Okay, Fantastic. Okay, okay, okay. Number 10 is the uh, uh, official name. And number 10 yeast was found, Ogawa, Pro Ogawa professor. His name is Ogawa, family name is Ogawa. So someone calls them, call it Ogawa yeast, Someone call it number 10 East. You got it? Okay, very good. Same thing. Uh, oh. We also had a question about uh, earlier about primal strength. Uh, mm -hmm. Namagenshu. Namagenshu versus uh, yeah. Green Ridge. And uh, yes. is it the exact same sake or is it a different sake? Is it the same sake of Devasansa, but uh, alcohol percentage is different? And you know, the final stage of fermenting the tank, the alcohol percentage would get to 17.5% of alcohol usually. And we squeezed the fermenting mush and we can get the original strong sake, uh, which has a 19.5% of alcohol. And we usually add natural water into original sake, and we changed uh, we changed the alcohol percentage 17 to 15. But uh, primal strength is the original sake of Deva San San. So the ingredient is of course same, uh, but the alcohol percentage is uh, different. And we do not we do not uh, of course we do not pasteurize. So unpasteurized original sake that is really goes well with uh, raw oyster. Yeah, oyster buns. Um, I have a question from uh, Reiko-san. Reiko-san asks, how many people work at the brewery during the season? Uh, one six. No, no, 60. 60. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh. But uh, 60, 60 in winter season. 40 off season. Oh, Because wow. the brewery worker 
is a farmer. Aha. After, after we finish brewing, they go back to their farm. Mm, rice field. I see, I see. Making fruits. Making fruits. Yes, yes. I see, I see. Yes. Uh, another question. Um, so uh, what is used um, when the rice is polished? There yes. is the byproduct. Um, what is Good used when, uh, uh, the, uh, the rice that is removed? The rice yes, yes. dust. Rice powder. Removed. Yes. What is used? Okay. 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 So the Dewazakura's average rice milling percentage is fifty percent. So the if we buy if we buy one thousand kilogram brown rice, we will be able to get five hundred kilogram rice powder. Mm -hmm. Rice powder. See? Yeah. And there are three types of rice powder. First portion is brown colored. Brown colored. We call that red rice powder, red rice powder, because the color is similar to red. And we sell to the red rice powder to the rice oil company, rice oil company, which locates next to the Wazakura Sake Brewery. Next, just only, only one minute walk <laughs> from here. So we can sell every red rice powder to the rice oil making company. So, and after that, we can get uh, white rice powder and we sell to the who's, who's making company. So the white rice powder would be used for making uh, rice cracker, uh, dango, traditional Japanese uh, rice cake or something. So we can sell everything, every rice powder to the maybe oil, sometimes oil, sometimes foods. So no waste, no waste. We don't want to waste anything. Yes. Okay? Japanese. Japanese. Um, yes. uh, uh, Cassidy, oh, okay. Cassidy's, Cassidy's asking full on brewing questions, uh, I yes. think, for, for a home brew coming up soon. Uh, he wants to know uh, after steaming uh, Kakimai at about 38 to 40% moisture weight. Uh, mm -hmm. After 48 hours in the koji muro, what is the mm -hmm. desired final koji moisture, please? Good question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good question. This is Inoue will answer. Please. <laughs> 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 It means we got 40 kilogram uh, water into the rice. Okay, so 100 kilogram polished rice change to 140 kilogram steamed rice. And we carry 140 kilogram rice into the coach making room. And after two days, in two days, we can get completed, complete uh, rice koji. And at that time, the weight is 100. 110 kilogram koji rice. So 30 kilogram water content would. Ah, just as the important numbers are coming out, we have a freeze that yeah. might have been the ninja in by making uh, koji making process because yeah. we make <laughs> so 100 kilogram rice, 140 kilogram steamed rice. And the last stage, last final, final weight is 110 kilogram coach rice. Yeah. Okay, you get it? You got it? Yes. Okay, another, okay. Uh, another quick question uh, from Trent about, okay, okay. Uh, you obviously mentioned earlier that we do age sake at a controlled temperature, but are you guys making any uh, koshu at room temperature? Um, you know, obviously certain uh, sake to be drunk soon and other yeah. sakis 
like the Yuki Mama and we age for mm -hmm. five, years, depending on which version. You know, okay, so, so thank, you for, thank you for the good question. Thank you for the good, good question. Uh, I think Japanese sake, uh, Japanese aging sake, we can divide two types of aging sake. One is made by uh, aging by low temperature, low temperature. And another is aging by regular temperature, room temperature. Of course, we have, uh, we have uh, different types of aging sake, uh, aging by regular room temperature. That is really, really strong taste. Yes. Good, strong flavor. Mm. Multi-layered, uh, really strong flavor. We have, we have, but we do not export anymore. We'd like to export, maybe soon, maybe soon. Maybe soon. Maybe soon. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, our yeah, boss is listening on this conversation right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. And that kind of sake, that kind of sake, uh, really good to enjoy room temperature, uh, warm okan sake. Yeah, it's really nice. So I do have another uh, separate uh, techno questions and, and questions are pouring in, pouring in yeah. at the moment. But uh, you have a, a aeration or a de-aeration machine uh, in the brewery. How does that get utilized in sake making and, and what effect does it have on the sake? Uh, Chris, that's the question. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, uh, as you know, uh, we Japanese sake company only make sake in actually winter, from autumn to winter. And after, after making every sake, we have to uh, keep the quality for the year, for the year. And uh, when, when we think about the aging sake, we have to think about two, two main, two important things, temperature and oxidation, oxidation. Because sake contains oxygen inside the liquid. So uh, before aging sake, we have a special equipment to get rid of the oxygen, which was contained into the sake liquid. So after getting rid of the oxygen, we move every sake into the cold temperatures warehouse. So the, our premium sake is always clean, always beautiful. Because uh, aging pro before aging process, we get rid of the oxygen from the sake. Okay. 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 Um, so we talked about aging, which is fantastic. Um, talked about the rice. Uh, Carrie, do you have a question that's come up? I, I think we've gotten a lot of them answered. There was a question about a taru sake. I believe you. Taru sake, yes. Taru sake, scutte masu ka? Uh, actually. <clears throat> Taru sake uh, in Japan is always enjoyed in winter season. In winter season. So we usually uh, re bottle into udum taru from the glass bottle. Uh, and we usually send, send it to liquor shop or restaurant. And uh, the customers of the restaurant and liquor shop will be enjoy the uh, cedar flavored, taro flavored sake at restaurant or liquor shop. So we do not use taro sake by using wooden fermenting tanks. But after, after, after bottling, we move to wooden tanks. I, I got it. So We've been talking a lot and, and answering questions a bit, and I'm looking at faces and everybody's interested, but I have a small problem, and that is that we need to say kampai again. Uh, okay. So everybody can grab their glass again okay. and, uh, okay. and 
let's let's get a get a comp by going. John Puma, I know you have more that time. No, Is it that no. time? Let's suck it in this glass. All right. So let's uh, let's all say comp by. Thank you all again. Yeah. We have more questions. Bye. 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 I love the song. Goodbye. Andrew. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 That was fantastic. Bye. 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 You guys all the time. We're doing all right. You guys like this shirt? Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, um, a what? I'm going buy with Cherry. So wait, if you guys don't know this, oh, Cherry and I know each other from a long time ago. We've known okay, each other for as long as they was Bye. 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 Thank you. His dad and my dad were involved. In, were we both in the FBI <laughs> yeah, or were they scouts? So so what are you even drinking? Uh, what is that? This was amazing. When people start drinking, and then they start confessing. We have to say goodbye. I put yeah, so many stories are happening. Oh, so uh, I'm gonna. Oh, I just want to say one thing. We're gonna. We can ask another can question. Can I'm gonna quick a quick share a screen just to let you know, share it for, for all you people tonight. Um, you want to thank the brewery. Mute. Mute. You want me to mute you? We appreciate uh, them letting us step into their lives and taking time out of their day. To hang out with us, uh, wherever we are. Um, I also want to thank um, a bunch of places that helped us uh, promote this and get sake to your hands all over the place. So we have, uh, in no particular order, Bar, bar Uwe to Kamu, uh, High Times, Tabula Rosa, Shinji, Kena Wine Merchants, Bishak Ramen, all in California, DC Online Sake Shop uh, in DC. Fujioka Wine Times, Marukai, and the Sake Shop in Honolulu and Hawaii. Uh, Izakaya Mita, that man that was just talking a moment ago. Murasake and Summertime Jazz Lounge in, in Illinois. The Wine Source in, in Maryland in Baltimore. Certix out in Minnesota. Uh, Vine Wine, Hunter's Point Wine and Spirits, Ambassador Wines, uh, Oak and Barrel, Ivan Ryman, Sa Sakaya, all in New York. Uh, Rishi Sushi in Columbus, Ohio, Ushabu in Cleveland, Ohio, Namazake Paul out of Portland, Hanyato Sake no Mi, and Uajimaya in Washington. Thank you for getting sake to everybody so we can do those kanpais and talk about Dewa Zakrata. Um, now let's get rid of this screen and, and throw it out there. Does anybody, I see the chat filled up. Carrie, can you grab a question out of there if there is one? Yes, okay. Um, from Mr. Thomas May, how is sake brewing different from making the mash to distill shochu? Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a shochu advisor. I think it's not much different. I don't know. If I can, if I can jump in, Craig from New York. Thanks, yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Go ahead. I was going to answer. Get in there, Craig. There's absolutely no difference. Now. There's two different ways they can do shochu in Japan. You can either distill it, when you're doing it from rice, you can either distill it directly from the rice, making the same exact mash that you're gonna make for sake, or you can use the residual kasu, or the leftover of the sake batch to create your shochu. So there's, there's absolutely no difference. It's the same, it's just during the distillation process, obviously we boil the mash, which we do not do in sake so that we can get the alcohol to vaporize and go up the steam pipes and condense down on the other side. So sake is a much uh, less concentrated product. It's a much fresher product. And it's much more organic because it doesn't really require any sort of technology or modernization to create this beverage. Ah, thank you very much, Craig Stein, always. So it's so always full. Kamoto-san, you were going to talk a little bit about uh, Yuki Maman because I know you prepared a bottle. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Monster. Monster sake. 
<laughs> I missed that in the 300 milliliter bottle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Mr. Um, Puma, Todd Puma, I believe, um, was talking about it 40 year, John Puma. John Puma. About it 40 he, year. He came to the Osaka club before. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, he did. Talking about 40, 40th anniversary of Oka. Oh, what? Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. He leaped over. John Puma leaped over to De Wasakura. Yes, he did. No, I'm. By the way, John. By the way, John. Just so you know that you are now Puma uh, from now on in my world. Oh, don't, don't do, don't do that, Chris. Please. I just want to make John Puma. 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 You're still leaping over the Pumas in my world, John. Ah, oh, th thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. <laughs> Painful. Uh, but yes, I would love to bring in the, the special anniversary 40 year uh, De Wazakura, um special bottling, but I think they've already sold out of all of it. So uh, we probably can't get it. Well, well, uh, the reason I brought it up is that the 30 year was uh, formative for my appreciation and my love for De Wazakura. So hearing that there was a 40, I was very excited mm -hmm. and then a little sad that, uh, that, I missed, that we missed our window. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get the TTB behind it and, and uh, sneak some in, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll maybe, maybe we'll fly some over. Um, <laughs> so no promises being made on a recorded uh, internet uh, space. <laughs> can we just do it like the Olympics and just um, call it 40 next year? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know. I can't, I don't know who said that. I, I appreciate it. That was me. That was me, Brian. Mito. That, that is, that is a, a terrible idea. That can work. I, I, I mean, I'm thinking we should just question. call it, we should call it the John Puma 40 next. Perfect. I, I believe it was Todd Puma. Todd Puma. Sorry, the Todd Puma 40 next. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I have a request from Akari, Akari san from uh, Deo Zakura. Um, she would like for everybody to compi and kind of hold the pose uh, for a group photo, I believe. ちょっと待って、ちょっと待ってくれよ。ちょっと待って、ちょっと待ってくれよ。準備しなくちゃ。Oh yeah, Few more minutes. Minute, minutes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Just finished. Hi. We've been, we've been isolated for like okay. seventeen months. What's a few I'll minutes? I take photo. Three, two, one. Kampai. 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 